Welcome to Exploring Alaska Native Voices, a show about the evolving character of Alaska indigenous life in a world society. As this song says, come together all as one. Now let's cross Kachemak Bay in South Central Alaska to visit with Nathan and Carolyn Bagley, retired educators who live in China Poot Bay. They have an art studio which we'll have a chance to tour later on. But first, let's go to China Poot Falls with Nathan and his son, Dale Bagley, who will take us fish dipping. My dad, uh, Nathan Bagley, and his wife, Carolyn, uh, lease land from the Soldovia Native Association, but there is a lot of fee simple private ownership land down there as well. Oh look, here's seals having a beach party. Let's join them. One of the unique features about China Poot is that it pretty much goes dry when the tide goes out, especially on minus tides. And it's, it's really difficult to get there and you have to follow the channels. If you're not following the channels when the tide's going out, you're going to find yourself high and dry. And when you're going in, you've got to be careful. Uh, it just takes you a long time to wind your way in and out of the channels as the tide's coming in behind you. When you get in there, you better tie your, your boat up to a tree pretty high up or else uh, it'll, the anchor will be underwater and you can't get to it and it'll just be floating out there in the bay. So that's one of the things you really have to be aware of when you're there. But getting out of China Poot uh, can be a, a pretty tricky proposition. One of the lakes down there near China Poot is called China Poot Lake or Leisure Lake. And the creek that comes out of there is stocked by Cooking and Aquaculture Association. But one of the problems is, is there's a large waterfall and the sockeye, when they come back, can't get back up that waterfall. So it's what's called a terminal fishery. And, and so they stock the lake, the fish go out, they come back. Cooking and Aquaculture Association has a saner that is contracted to do what's called a cost recovery program. When the runs are really big like they were this last year, they actually open it up to saning for any saners that want to come in there and, and get the return of fish out there. Not only is it popular with the saners and, and they make money off it, but also uh, it's a recreational um, fishery for people over in Homer who come over into China Poot, that terminal fishery, and, and dip those uh, salmon out right below the falls. How did all this get started? They started back in the late 70s stocking the lake. Today, Cook Inlet Aquaculture Association stocks approximately 100,000 sockeye salmon. They return in about three years. The first year, they spin as an egg. The second year, they rear in fresh water. Then, two years at sea and return to China Poot Bay. Commercial fishermen have a self-imposed 2% tax on commercial harvests. Cooking and Aquaculture Association's primary mission is to improve salmon fisheries for everyone, commercial, sport, subsistence, and personal use. This dip net fishery is for Alaska residents, so please check with the Alaska Fish and Game for more information on new regulations. As easy as it may seem, it's not. With the swift current and moss on the rocks, makes it very slippery. So now that we have our limit, let's head back to the Bagley's where we can feast our eyes on the beautiful scenery and take that tour of the Bagby's Cove Wood Designs. Did you know that here in China Poot Bay, as the tide runs in and out, there's a difference of about 20 feet? About 1985, that's when they bought the place down in China Poot a few years after, and they've pretty much been there ever since. They do have another place on Kodiak, and that's their idea of kind of flying south for the winter, but, but China Poot is their main home now. My dad, uh, Nathan Bagley, and his wife, Carolyn, uh, started taking birch burls and hollowing them out and making them into bowls. And that was just something that they did for family and friends. And since it's progressed to an actual business called Bagley Cove Wood Designs, and they turn out very beautiful bowls now. And I, I, they're selling them, and they have a number of different places that they sell them. And of course, they're pretty treasured by family when we get one now. Each burrow has about 30 hours of time into it, and they, they hollow it out, and that's a very elaborate process. 
Carolyn usually does more of the finish work and, and the fine sanding and, and the staining that goes on. Not only do they do the uh, bowls, but they also do really beautiful works of art now with uh, eagles with big high arched uh, wings and, and, and different art designs. Besides the studio, the house, and the shop they're building now, they also have a, a greenhouse and they have gardens. Uh, they do grow a lot of their fresh vegetable. It, it, they don't make it over to Homer a whole lot, and so this allows them to have some fresh vegetable. Between gardening and wood carving, they always find time for a little hatchet practice. Here's a great place to sit and enjoy your morning coffee. Now let's go check out some other great places across from Homer, Alaska.